One of the greatest acts of black magic ever undertaken in history was something called the Inland Customs Line, also known as the Great Hedge of India, which is a customs barrier built by the British Empire across India starting in 1803 and was designed to prevent the smuggling of salt to avoid taxation. The line was initially made of dead thorny bushes but eventually evolved into a living hedge that grew up to 12 feet tall and represented something akin to the Great Wall of China traveling across India. During its heyday customs officers used to patrol the line and apprehend smugglers at one time their number was 14,000 officers in 1872 stressing the importance of the inland customs line to the British Empire in terms of procuring taxation from ordinary Indians. Not surprisingly, the hedge was considered to be an infringement upon the freedom of ordinary Indians and during the course of its history countless millions of Indians perished from salt deprivation salt being vital within hot countries such as India in order for survival. Another purpose for building the hedge was salt deprivation leads to lethargy and lack of muscle power and this would prevent Indians from uprising against the British Empire. So ostensibly the inland customs line or the great hedge of India was a form of biological warfare as well as taxation. In 1930, Gandhi led a march to the salt producing areas of Dandi by the sea and began making sea salt themselves in defiance of the salt laws. This would lead to the imprisonment of a staggering 80,000 Indians. The march was a significant event in the Indian independence movement, but even so it failed to get the tax or the hedge removed by the British Empire. The salt tax would eventually be abolished by the Indian government of Nehru in October 1946, not long after independence. The later government of Indira Gandhi overlaid much of the old route of the inland customs line with roads, and this gives you an idea of how colossal the project actually was. However, apart from enslaving the population of India, the sheer wickedness of the inland customs line, which could be comparable to probably one of the greatest acts of black magic in history, served another purpose, to destroy Hinduism, assault and protection of the psyche and soul by means of using salt, essential to Hindu and Vedic philosophy. Hindus believe that as salt emanates from the body as the sweat of Lord Vishnu, in the Garuda Purana Petra Kanda, it states, Salt is on par with everything divine. It yields everything the person wishes for himself. No dish tastes without salt. Hence, salt is the favorite of the Vedic ancestors. The gift of salt leads them to heaven. Salt originates from the body of Lord Vishnu. Hence, the yogis praise a gift of salt. Whenever a person is on their deathbed, Salt should be given as a gift. It opens the doorway to the heavens. And this stresses how important salt was to the Hindus in India, but also why the British built the inland customs line for means beyond that of revenue collection. It was literally to enslave the Indians, and in particular the Hindus, right down to the level of their souls. This of course is not a new thing. Many of us grew up being told in school that at one time salt was more valuable than gold. There was a reason for this. The elites of the periods wanted to keep salt for themselves. They knew it gave them spiritual protection from entities and also a psychological and a spiritual advantage over the peasants. This is why with the fall of the Roman Empire, and the ascendancy of Christianity that salt took on this powerful attribute. 
it became something of a biological weapon whereby the powerful Abrahamics could oppress their own people below them by depriving them of salt. How salt works in terms of spiritual protection is that it has an electrical quality. This electrical quality disrupts entities and pathological spiritual forces that are impacting upon an individual or their home. It is almost like scrambling the signal. The only salt that provides spiritual protection is organic sea salt. This is sea salt which has been harvested directly from the sea. And certain seas have much more powerful salt than others. This would include the Dead Sea in Israel and the Great Salt Lake in the USA. Because of the electrical nature of salt, the frequencies that salt function at are compatible with that of the human body, hence why we sweat salt, hence why we need salt. Other entities and pathological forces are unable to cross the frequency threshold created by the electrical nature of salt. And this is quite simply how it works. It provides something of a shield, an electrical barrier against these entities and forces. Before I get to how you can use salt in order to protect yourself and your home, I want to talk about the possible signs of entity attack or extreme psychic attack. In terms of both, the manifestation of how they affect the individual is very similar. Fuzzy thinking, clouded thoughts, sleeplessness, and a general sense of a weight being pressed down upon your body, difficulty of getting up in the morning. Another sign is late at night around 3 a.m. Breathing becomes quite difficult, not in the sense that it's asthmatic or a wheezing type sensation of fluid in the lungs. The lungs may be perfectly clear. What is happening is oxygen is not passing into the blood directly from the lungs. There is a force inside the lungs that is preventing the oxygen from entering into the body and flowing throughout it. It is akin to a feeling of being suffocated in fresh air. If your home is filled with salt and other protective items for the spirit and psyche such as crystals and you find yourself going away either to other people's houses or on vacation or staying in hotels and you cannot sleep and feel these sensations extremely strongly this is because you have no protection outside your own home and this makes it important to bring this protection with you when you travel. The only salt that provides spiritual protection is organic sea salt. Table salt does not work and absolutely Himalayan rock salt does not work. Himalayan rock salt is extracted by means of dynamite and heavy machinery and is loaded with shock. It is also sold into the West to gullible Westerners by Abrahamic gangs operating out of Kashmir and northern India. It does not provide spiritual or cleansing protection, in fact very much the opposite. And if you have respiratory conditions and are using Himalayan salt in your salt pipe, stop immediately and replace it with organic sea salt. particularly use Dead Sea Salt and this can be often procured at Jewish grocery stores or some supermarkets under the title of Kosher Salt. If you haven't used salt before, it is an extremely easy way of spiritual protection. Get the organic sea salt and put it in a pouch of cotton or a cotton sock. A nylon sock will even work and carry it on your person. 
a substantial amount as is practical possibly something the size of a table tennis ball of salt inside the sock or the pouch sleep with it bring it on the road with you if you travel a lot take it with you when you commute the protection it will provide will be remarkable regarding the cleansing nature of salt in your own home as salt has long been known as a remarkable cleaner and destroyer of bacteria it works the same way regarding the spiritual hygiene within the home go through your house and toss the salt through the air do not under any circumstances invoke a spirit of the salt as some new age outlets have been telling people to do in recent years you're trying to dispel entities not encourage them the salt doesn't need invocation or infusing with spirits its power is self-evident and self-contained within its own molecular structure when the salt has been spread all over the house notice as you're throwing it the specific sound that salt makes when it lands on things like carpet and flooring then sweep all the salt up place it into a paper bag and dispose of it outside generally most people pour it into their garden not near your plants of course in an area somewhere you don't have plants growing a friend of mine whose mother came from hong kong used to do the same thing by mixing dry rice and salt in the same handful and doing the same thing but rather than putting it into the garden the salt would be placed into a flowing river and any ghosts as she called them would be washed out into the ocean if you're embarking upon a spiritual path i can suggest nothing more vital and important than the incorporation of salt into your spiritual practice and your daily use there is a very good reason why in the past salt was more expensive than gold as i previously mentioned it was to make the psyche and souls of the peasantry vulnerable in order to give the aristocrats an edge over them in every way including spiritual they also used silver for the same reason organic sea salt is one of the most important substances on this planet bring it into your life befriend it and it will reward this devotion to the perspiration of vishnu 100 fold